All right. I think I've got the. Uh, I think I've got the audio working now. So I'm going to do a few uh, thumbnail compositions here. Um, I have a rough concept in mind um, in an area that I almost never work in, and that is uh, horses. <laughs> it's funny because it's like a whole like niche of uh, of art, you know, people would really love to paint horses, and I can see why that is, um, it would be kind of obvious, I think they're just these, uh, really graceful, beautiful creatures, but anyway, um, I'm going to start with just a few compositions, so I have, um, this idea um, but I want to uh, I'm gonna try out a different uh, a few different uh, um, implementations of it so there's this uh, I want to have like a main uh, figure up front here this would be the, the horse kind of running towards us and And behind it, this kind of big dust cloud kicking up, and uh, I want to have—I th think I want to have horses in that cloud, you know. Uh, but I had played with a couple of other concepts where um, you know, kind of other things were being generated. So this cloud is kind of like a. Uh, non-literal um, uh, thing that you know, just, so the, the idea here is more uh, metaphoric or conceptual than it is a um, literal uh, illustration of you know, what this would look like okay so I'm going to play with a few more layouts here Back to that, that brighter, bright there. And tonight we might not get as far. Definitely last week was a very long um, session, and I am uh, not going to repeat that this week. Um, sometimes a piece of art does take a while to, um, you know, to be realized, um, but I am definitely short on time this week, I'm going to try not to have that come through in the work, though I think uh, that's very unlikely, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's probably going to come through, uh, so I want to be uh, efficient with uh, with my decision making, but uh, hopefully not too, not too quick to where it uh, damages the art. So that is why we are starting with thumbnails. Keep it uh, light and non-committal at the start kind of seeing how we respond to these. Now whenever I've tried to do horses before it's it's always difficult. I end up with a like a bug or something. You know. Stay tuned for some rather exciting creatures. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Maybe it 
just make the eyes too big. I don't know. Maybe a lot of things. <laughs> Figuring out the proportions of how these things ought to, uh, you know, how, how all the relative proportions ought to line up. That is something that uh, I think would take some time and study. And we might actually just end on that, you know, uh, if we can't get to the to a really nice composition, and we just do some horse studies because that will uh, ultimately lead to where this is headed, I think. Let's see. I do like the idea of separating the um, values into these masses. So um, rather than having, uh, you know, this is kind of like um, centered on the kind of dust cloud and it's um, kind of how that dust, dust cloud would be lit, whereas I do think it makes sense to um, pick out different zones um, of value and uh, keep those a little more um, keep them kind of localized grouped together, you know Okay, let's do another one. I'm really thinking what we, whatever we see back here needs to be um, really pushed back and subtle, low contrast. You know. Here of this being kind of like the dust cloud, you know, comes up and over and then settling back down. I think it's important with these um, uh, thumbnail compositions that you um, aim for an idea in each one. You know, uh, sometimes it is nice to just explore, just kind of play with it. Um, but I think if you're considering you know, this one, uh, these clouds coming back down, and then uh, obviously this diagonal uh, value there. 
and then you know this next one we can play with a, a completely different uh, concept. Maybe we want um, you know, some light coming in. Maybe we'll backlight it a little bit so we get this um, kind of blown out sky in the background here, and then we'll bring the cloud up. So the more um, uh, volume we're looking through, the, uh, the darker that's going to get as it comes towards us. And so we can lighten this up just a little here. smudge brush and just kind of flatten these uh, layers out a little bit here so there's kind of clear um, uh, steps back in space there. Okay. Backlit, we're going to have uh, rim lights in here on the edge of this, and we'll apply a lot of those uh, quickly. We won't uh, spend too much time on that because that defeats the purpose of a thumbnail image. Um, but our rim lights would come in right on the edge, oops, wrong color, uh, right on the edge of these, uh, these clouds. too uniform but we can play with that and then we'll do the the rump of the horse and then the top of its head we'll have to work on the pose there to make it look like it is actually you know, galloping towards us rather than Standing still and looking bored. Let me tilt the uh, tilt the head a little bit. face again. Okay, then we can go to our smudge and kind of get these looking a little more irregular here. Without destroying that horse, let me try to get, get kind of close to it. Well, currently, we kind of have everything coming up over this left side here. You know, uh, coming in like so. I really don't uh, like to do the 
the god rays too much. I just think it's kind of quirky, but who knows? <laughs> I might make an exception. This is, uh, this is definitely not a theme that I normally do anyway, so uh, I guess I can get in touch with all those um, all those things that I typically a shoe scoff at is that the right word I don't know if you're into making god rays in your paintings that's you know I'm not gonna make fun of you um, I just find for me uh, I don't know it ends up being something that's a uh, Maybe a shortcut that gets me nowhere. It's kind of how it feels. All right, all that is quite uniform. I'm not dying to uh, destroy it. So what I'll do is I'll make a new layer. Do sample all layers on the smudge, and then I'm just going to start kind of moving things around to make it less um, structured you know I, I had made it uh, quite uh, quite a simple shape there and I think if I just start pushing it around the canvas and we might come up with some more interesting shape language in the of in that cloud plume there. So I think already I'm a little happier with that. If I hide that, bring it back in. This has a certain symmetry to it and it almost just feels too calm. Um, and I'm going to actually take this a, an, a, another step further here. So um, I'll just go ahead and merge that down. Whoops. We'll just grab this and move across with it here. I guess we run out of space. One second here. Let's move the whole thing over. Grab that again. Go up here. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller because we don't need to work that big. And then um, and then I want to get a little more uh, designerly with this uh, with this um, uh, smoke cloud or dust cloud rather. I'm going to give it more of a um, diagonal shape. Uh, make it look a little more dynamic by uh, maybe having some wind or something that's pushing it off to the side and then having it kind of curl back down. Hey, kind of like we were talking about in that other one. Let's play with that concept and see if we can introduce that here. So we've got it coming up and then kind of collapsing back down. And then I think over here maybe we just kind of smooth that out. Almost looks like a rock there or something. And I think I want to bring some of this over. Carry that right through this uh, ground plane, so it helps it look a little more. Uh, should help it look a little more um, dimensional, like that. Carrying that through makes that space uh, pass behind the horse. Oh, 
I am butchering this horse's pose, so I'm going to have to come back and address that. But let's get this cloud figured out first, and then, then we'll do that. So I like these little diagonals here, kind of counter counterbalancing this, these diagonals, and everything's kind of pointing in towards the subject. So I'll put that a little bit more. And uh, let's unruin this horse's pose. I think maybe, um, I don't know, I should probably look at some more reference, but I think getting the, um, this kind of counterbalance where you know, the body's kind of off this way and the head is tilted this way, you know, so there's kind of a slight change in, uh, like there's a velocity coming this, this way, but then it's looking over. some of this dust up clearly down there. All right, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. I know it's just even smaller on your screen than it is on mine. Um, so that's the idea with this one. Um, I'm not going to wax too long on it because there are other um, other ideas to play with. But yeah, so we get this kind of thing going on. And then it comes up and around, circles back down. And then we have these lines leading in. And then I want to have this, you know, this little diagonal here. And then as far as the pose, um, head this way, body this way. And that's the idea. And I guess even here we have this, you know, kind of loops back around. So. I like the ideas going on there. Um, again, I don't want to be too controlling with it. Um, this one is a little tamer version of that idea. Uh, obviously, this is, these are quite steep diagonals here. Um, we'll do a few more. Oh, I see uh, Manuel in the chat there. He said, don't be judging. <laughs> Judging on the, the God Rays stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I should issue an apology, I guess, uh, to all God Ray artists out there. I apologize for my insensitive words and for not liking that kind of technique. Oh, man. See, that was an apology that was like a not apology. I'm bad at this. Alright. Let's do... See, most of these have, except for this one, have a light sky. And I think it might be interesting to have um, this just completely um, either overcast or like storm uh, kind of feeling or even if the the dust cloud being kicked up is is itself, uh, you know the um, the uh, you know that dark shadow up there. But I think this might be a fun way to approach this. We have the we'll do that old like classic jumping over the fire thing. By classic, I mean right up there with God Rays.
feel like if I do this though, the horse has to be has to have a nice contrast there with the uh, with that bright brightness below it. I don't really want to do monster lighting, you know, where the light is from below. value um, so if we have kind of our darks up here our mids across the bottom and then uh, our horse could be uh, could have our, our brightest values in it which would seem to make sense I think I just got done saying the horse should be dark. Man, what is this guy talking about? Yeah, lens flares. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we should add in some lens flares. Let's just go to here. Yellow God rays. And Actually, we gotta see the sun coming through there, peeking through the cloud. I'll we'll just do. I'm gonna take this seriously, and then uh, lens flare. It's been a while. I'm not very good at my lens flares. Like a diamond lens. Yeah. I have the little ones off to the side and stuff. Nothing like multiple lens flares where it's like you've taken the effect and you're you're shooting this shot through three different lenses simultaneously. Perfect. Okay, so we will move on. Let's get our colors lined up again. Oh, okay, I'm kind of running short on um, ideas here other than just to change the lighting. So we go with one where the light is a little bit lower off to the side giant eagle descending from a high backlit from on high backlit by the sun piercing the clouds yes yeah saving the day um, with uh, with like an American flag fluttering, falling behind it, all tattered. I think you're onto something there. That could be that could be a real piece of work. I mean, piece of art. Freudian slip. I don't know, uh, Manuel, are you, do you do horses very much? Is that your, is that a painting subject for you? I, I feel like you have done some, but I don't, I don't recall exactly. We're going to have to call on the horse people to help us out. Do 
some water here, and some reflections. That's what all the cool kids are doing. horizon with God rays coming through. It'll be like illuminating so all the uh, dust on this side is all illuminated from the sun behind it. And then over here it's all again splish splash in the water because all of a sudden we decided that reflections would be cool oh yeah we gave up on our uh, dynamic pose, didn't we? So this comes in at an angle that way. The body is kind of off this way. It's a right, right of passage for kids to draw uh, horses down here in Texas. Your horses are looking great, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, they are very small and abstract. <laughs> uh, once we get into the details, then we'll, then we'll see. I once did this sculpture in. Uh, when I uh, went back to school and it was like kind of this round bulbous sort of abstract form and to me I thought it looked like a pregnant horse so that's what I named it and everyone was confused what is this you've brought in a, 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 a soccer ball with a couple nubs on it and you've called it a pregnant horse This one over here is bothering me though. I think I'll I think I need to shorten up this. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. killed it okay all right one more to fill out the uh, the nine there we go I should have pulled a reference from uh, the fantasy movie I have been feeling the uh, the, uh, the itch lately to watch Lord of the Rings again there was a film that my wife and I watched when we first got married we took it in like 20 minute chunks or something so it, it took us like I don't know how long it is, someone knows the math I'm sure on how uh, how long the Lord of the Rings is uh, but yeah, it was weeks and I uh, actually really enjoyed um, spreading it out that long so that it uh, kind of just enjoy little bits of the story. 
rather than the um, kind of uh, Lord of the Rings marathon that um, some of us might be <laughs> more familiar with. Uh, yeah, but it has been a while and I'm kind of feeling the, uh, I don't know, just getting that vibe again. Might be because we're coming up on our anniversary and this was kind of, this was the time of year when we were um, watching it. So, should be the time. And this, I think, I might just do a little more flattened out um, and I want to um, on this one I think I will focus a little bit more on the background um, horses being uh, an element you know I think some of these other ones I um, I was looking at the big picture, big composition, and that's important. Um, but as I had mentioned, I I want this to be um, kind of about these uh, these not figures, but uh, kind of representations. These kind of horses kind of emerging from this cloud behind it, uh, behind the main uh, figure here. And this one, even though I think I will highlight it as the focal point, um, I want to kind of work out the idea here for these for these other ones. Okay, so if I have... I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it like this. Like this horse is a is a literal uh, horse, whereas it's kicking up this dust behind it, and then in the dust, you know, it's kind of like forming uh, into these other horses. And um, being someone who doesn't normally do horses, I get this like sense that this has probably been done before. <laughs> You know, like the, it's like the spirit animal in the cloud or whatever. Um, but, I don't know, I just kind of like the idea and wanted to play with it. So, having these horses emerge and maybe kind of just casting, casting a shadow over the cloud form. But, um, I think the trick will be kind of drawing these in a way that they... Um, they feel integrated into the into this uh, dust cloud rather than um, like there's these just big puffy plumes and then they're like popping out you know um, that I think could work if they are a little more literally um, drawn uh, you know like there like there's a whole stampede or whatever you call it going on here and um, you know, then you really could just have, you know, horses kind of 
popping through the cloud, but I think to have them be integrated as elements of that dust cloud will be uh, a little more tricky to get that to get the flow right. It's kind of like I, I don't want them to necessarily read on the first look. So. And I think these shadows get longer as they as we get to the bottom of the form here. Shorten them up when we're at the top. I don't know if this is like uh, an over overly complicated way to do this, or if this is um, a way to get around not having studied horses. You know, like, well, I mean, that's just the cloud part. We'll just. Obscure that and clap. I don't know. I would tend to think uh, that the the more you understand the subject, the better off you are representing it in abstract ways. So I don't think it's going to be a don't think that's going to be a crutch we can lean on. Unfortunately. I mean, if you consider leaning on crutches a fortunate thing. Okay, I like how this is blending up here. Um, don't want to get too much into this other uh, thumbnail there. But then when you actually come to um, clean up that part of the scene, uh, be careful that you know having perceived it without a um, kind of rectangle uh, framing um, then you'll have to do something uh, to resolve that once you get to the borders of your frame on the full image so again that's another reason to kind of get it in there on the thumbnail though that's something I really love about the thumbnails is that they they're just so much looser and, and free you're not like uh, completely stuck with um, you know gotta fill this whole area in and uh, make it look right you know, it's, it's much more uh, gestural Coming back to the chat, uh, Benjamin says, Do you imagine music to these scenes? If so, what kind? Um, no, I don't. I don't really. Um, sometimes I will have kind of music in my head when I'm um, uh, doing some work. This, I, I can't say that I really had that thought in mind. Um, it's actually kind of an idea that, I mean, who knows if it'll work out or not um, but as far as how I envision it I would it's it's an idea that if I can get it to work I would love to love to do in oil um, and there's something about a physical painting and I think also just the the medium would lend itself really nicely to um, uh, the kind of blending and so forth for the clouds and the, and the uh, soft transitions and the horse hair and stuff okay so I know that wasn't about music, but that's about how I kind of imagine it in a in a different in a different context. I guess that is what I mean. Um, if I were to put music to this, I don't know. I don't know. There is a um, there is a music source that I really like uh, called the the Music Bed. Uh, that's themusicbed.com. It's a, um, it's primarily like licensing for advertisement stuff. 
uh, but it's really really great quality um, cinematic stuff and I mean all kinds of stuff there's Christmas and you know whatever it's whatever you want to find for um, for your project um, but their cinematic stuff I think is really nice I mean it's funny uh, you know, you'll go and listen to it, and they, and they have it set up so you can listen kind of as much as you want and kind of get familiar with the songs. And then when you have a project, you um, you, you usually have a song in mind because you've already been listening to them. Um, but the uh, the interesting thing uh, with that is that you know once you start listening to them, and then you hear them everywhere. You know, you, you you're watching an ad and you hear that song and you go, oh yeah, that's a it's Tony Anderson, you know, or whoever the, um, the composer was, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now that we have these, I'm going to look at these and think what, what it is that I like about each one and what uh, perhaps is missing. I do like the the drama of these ones down here. I think of all of them, I, I think I gravitate towards this one the most. Um, just the, it's probably because I was a little, bo little bit more mindful of controlling value zones on this one. So compositionally, I think it, it works. Though, um, this has not worked out the other horse uh, horses in the composition. Um, I like this idea here of these kind of diagonals, and I want to uh, I want to be clear that you can't always mix and match all of the ideas. So sometimes you can you can point out the things that you like, and actually I'll just go ahead and do that with um, with this. We'll do a little markup, um, and then sometimes you can uh, sometimes you can get them together into one composition, but uh, you think about it like it's a it's a solution to a problem and not all solutions can be combined into one solution. Sometimes they're um, sometimes they are kind of antithetical to each other. So I do like these shadows, the horses uh, in these background ones here. Um, this one I like. I definitely like this. Uh, um, just kind of some of this abstractness in here. Uh, I like the um, separation of the shapes. And then the horse has a separate shape. Um, the drama of this one, right? This is like this strong lighting here. And the reflection as well. And in this one, I think it's these uh, strong diagonals that I like. And I like how the composition is um, kind of circular. draws you back in. So, can we combine all those? I don't know. Let's copy these. So, I think we can leave that background in there. So we're going to get rid of the notes for a second. Do control shift C, control V. So that will um, copy you know, everything on the screen there and paste it. Same thing here. Everything within this uh, marquee, that is. And then this one here. So then we'll hide our um, original sounds. And we're left with these. Sometimes rearranging them too will have you look at them differently. Because if they 
uh, if you perceive it a certain way because it, it's on um, one corner or edge of the page, that can be a problem. And let's flip them. I think I like this one in reverse, not any of the other ones. Uh, <clears throat> but the, the point of flipping is to see you know, what is working um, and what needs to be fixed. You kind of see it with fresh eyes. So flip again. Let's see if we can do a composite of all of these. So we'll grab these, scale them down, move them over. And we'll do one more. So then we'll grab the midtone value like we have here. And we will bring in this really dark value up here. That. Grab my uh, smudge brush and uh, kind of design those shapes a little bit more. Let's try to get some of this diagonal uh, coming in that we have uh, from over here uh, from this composition. Again, it's like there's these counter counterbalancing diagonals. Counter 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 lever counter something something like that. So it comes up. This may be a matter of um, you know, blending these values so that it grades from here. You know, we get a gradation that goes up that diagonal and then continues on over this way. Try to get those connected. I said that we might not be able to combine all these ideas into one, but we're going to try. Okay, so we get this mid down here. I want to establish that a little, make it a little stronger and a little more, um, not necessarily flattened out, but um, given a given its own kind of region of color, region of value there. Then we got our horse is going to be in this area. We have it centered up. Though that might be something we could consider changing, you know, 
just bring it off to the side just a little bit. No, I think it should maybe go. See, in this one we have it. Yeah, it does kind of give an S curve there. That's kind of interesting. Well, it implies it would imply that the horses come from this direction. But then with this blowing off this way, it would imply that he's come this way. So uh, that might be something to play with where we um, we intentionally show that kind of S curve in the composition. And I might want to come back to that shadow. I don't know if that was uh, a little bit premature. Because we can change the lighting. That was the thing we liked about this one, right? It's that dramatic lighting. So, I don't know, maybe if we get this lighting here. We'll do the god rays. And we'll have it fall here on the cloud as it's puffing up there. Johnny Cash Ghost Riders in the Sky. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like some kind of um, country, or like not really country, but like old country, old old western kind of uh, uh, vibe. You do get that a little bit. I mean, you have to with horses. Or Lord of the Rings. So the more I get into this, the more I think I may I may have to postpone this one a little bit um, because I have an early flight to catch and I still have to pack and go to sleep and all that stuff. Um, but I wanted to get this idea started. I was hoping I'd get a little bit farther along with uh, with some horse sketches. Get, kind of get that subject figured out a little more. But it looks like we might be getting closer to the composition, you know, getting the composition figured out and then uh, stepping away from it. For, for time. Uh, that said, I um, will not be back in next week. I will be off the uh, live stream, and uh, in two weeks I should be right, kind of right back to it. Unless I have some kind of an epiphany on my trip and, and think, uh, I don't know. Every now and then I do have that, like, urge to go into hermit mode. You know, like, uh, now I'm just working my, on my art in complete solitude. And uh, I do think there's some value to that. I don't, I'm not sure, really. You know, there's. I think there's value in putting your work in front of people. Um, to uh, to really kind of test whether or not it's it's resonating. And um, I think the biggest thing with that is just kind of the, just the honesty of it. You know, you, you can't. Um, I don't know. You could have people who who will uh, not tell you the truth but your art will just try to make you feel good because um, they're worried about hurting your feelings or whatever. And, you know, you can be hard on yourself but also, in a weird way, like, not honest with yourself about the things you're ignoring and, 
need to be working on. And so I do think that um, being a little public about your art is uh, is beneficial. Uh, but there's also, you know, there's, there's pros and cons with it. Because then you you feel the pressure to produce. You're producing more kind of on the clock and on the... You're, you're I guess, tempted by popularity as a... Um, you know, what are the popular themes and what's going to do well on socials and all that kind of stuff. And, um, so, it's a mixed bag. Uh, but from what I've seen, almost everyone gets over that stuff. Uh, I mean, it, anyone who's had some success in it are, are those that have eventually decided that that was just not uh, how they wanted to create, you know, with that kind of um, pressure, I guess. Or with those those in internalized pressures, you know, we, we kind of put those things in ourselves. Anyway, let's try not to get into this too far before, uh, <laughs> or, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make this go a little longer before I get into some weird, uh, esoteric, uh, philosophical kind of take on art philosophical hot take He's running in front of a mud puddle just for us, just for this painting. I said he, but this could be any any kind of a horse. Just throwing that in there, it's a freebie. Okay, what else did we like about these? Um, I'm gonna go do a new layer and just start seeing if we can implement some of these other um, ideas here where this cloud is gonna... Well, we want it to pass in front of that. I don't know. diagonals back in a little bit here that we're kind of pointing back in towards our focal point. That, that one's too much I think. can push some of this back. Actually, wouldn't it be kind of interesting if you have these rays coming down and then the uh, the forms of the horses are you know, uh, kind of illuminated by that. So it's the shadows that these clouds are casting that kind of gives you that sense. Well, first I'm going to push them back in value. Because remember we liked or I like <laughs> this. Um, uh, kind of had these clear delineated value zones. And we want to 
want to go lighter up here? Or do we want to go darker? To make all of that just a little bit less contrasty and maybe like it's more... Uh, I don't know, more shadow being uh, cast by this cloud coming over top. And then I think we can brighten up the horse as well. And I don't know if I want to paint another horse or if I just want to grab one of these and <laughs> copy it in there. Uh, we'll do it. It's good practice. It's good practice. This is, this is why we're here. All right, so that light's coming in this, this way. And I might reverse this, this pose. So that, uh, well, actually, first let me get this head tilt a little, a little more. Exaggerated. And one thing that I don't, uh, I don't think that I really dealt with in this, um, this composition is the um, the height of the horizon line. Um, because that is dictating how we're seeing this horse. You know, because I want to kind of want to have the um, the rump back here like higher so that it's just a little more dynamic. We're not like looking up at it like we would normally look at a horse. Um, but it's uh, it has to line up with this ground plane, or uh, it's not going to work. And so that is dictating that. Uh, dictating the, the angle of that. So I think when I bring this over here. It's got a dust cloud. It alluded to this, but I want to make it a little stronger. Whether or not that'll work, I'm not totally sure. Should this be the leg planted, or should this be the leg planted? And this one's up. I need a horse person advisor. We'll get some reference. Eventually. What's the difference between a colt and a foal? I mean, a foal is a baby horse, right? Is a colt like a... Is that just another name, or...? Either way, I am confused.
So here we'll bring in the shadow. So we get like our uh, our dust cloud get kicked up. I want to show that the horse's path is kind of curved like this. And then I'm just going to take this and kind of smooth that out there. And then sharpen up the edges. Just to clarify, when I said smooth that out, I meant to increase the value so that it's not uh, so much contrast there. But I do want the contrast and edge. Uh, and the reason being, I'm showing that this is a a cast shadow there. So you have this soft transition as it rounds the form of that kind of dust cloud and then uh, a hard edge on the shadow shows that that's where the light uh, terminated on that. And I want maybe a few little particles up in the air, little rocks, something. So the ears, I always get them wrong. Ends up looking like a rabbit or a donkey. Again, need more help from the horse people. See if it's out, it's like, hey, I'm bored. Like a bored rabbit. It's straight up. Okay, so we've combined some of these ideas. I think we could still play with the direction of the light. Um, we didn't really do much with the drama of this one. We did add the you know, water there. Um, we'll do one more layer and just see about bringing in the dramatic lighting in a way. So maybe like, you know, we have, have these rays coming through here. You're welcome. And then we'll uh, maybe have it come back here as well and just catch some rim, uh, rim lights on these. Again, we want to maintain our hierarchy of, um, of uh, value.
gotta get some jitter, color jitter on this brush. So, um, depending on what your foreground color is, it'll not give you that true color that you're aiming at. So because my foreground uh, was this really bright, um, I was getting a kind of jitter between the two, which is nice to get, you know, kind of free uh, hue shift, but, or hue and value shift, but uh, comes at a cost when you're Trying to get a specific color in there. Ears should be straight back when they're excited or scared. This is coming from a Texan, so it is reliable. Straight back. Brought to you by the horse people. Okay. So, I'm just going to do a few adjustments really quick, and then I think we'll just pause on this one, rather than trying to jam it through and, and get a whole bunch of headway in with very little time. Um, so, I think a color balance... Maybe a few, I might throw in a few of the horse shadows in there, and I would say that's about it for today. So I could, I could see these kind of popping through as, uh, as uh, horse heads kind of popping out of this cloud here. a little more subtle with them. Don't jinx it though. He said he was going to be subtle and then he painted these bright pink horses. Bright pink horses with their ears pointed back. See, we're learning tonight. This is good. This is 
that's a good thing. Alright, so if I zoom in there, you can maybe see what I'm doing. Of course, it's all kind of the same pose, so I need to be careful of that. I noticed that um, a couple weeks back when I did those blue armed monkeys, and partly, you know, I was trying to figure out this this pose with the arms out, um, you know, kind of grasping a tree, cutting it, or whatever. Um, and then I compiled all those together into one big thing and seen and it like dawned on me like oh, okay <laughs> they, they all have the same pose so I think I changed one of them uh, but you know that's one where I'd like to go back and um, adjust it so that um, there's a little bit a little more dynamicism to it. Just checking back on the chat. So the, sorry, I'm late to the party. What did I miss? Uh, so we're actually close to wrapping up on this one. This is going to be a, a really short night, um, but I can I can back up a little bit and go through it. Um, let me grab all these and group that. And what is that? Oh, that's attached to one of these other ones. Whoops. That was in there somewhere. Yeah, right there. Okay, so um, we started with group these guys quick. Alright, so we started with this. Um, idea of a horse running and then there's a kind of a dust cloud being generated and so we generated these different thumbnail um, compositions of it and it's just really um, placement lighting uh, the um, areas the value shapes um, and uh, and then some kind of ideas around the actual you know the subject or content in it. it's like this you know you kind of have a, a light source behind it this one you have this um, reflecting uh, you know this water here to reflect um, this one we're thinking more about this diagonal shape the shape of the cloud kind of swirling around uh, to lead the eye back into the subject and then uh, from there we picked out our favorites or I picked out my favorites I, I say we as if you guys uh, if you all think the same way that I do um, but if you're following my train of thought, um, I liked this, uh, this delineation of values. So there's this mid-tone in the middle, and then a black kind of framing it, and then the brightest is in the center where the horse is. And there's still some blacks in there too so that it has a high contrast. Um, I liked this um, kind of swirling composition here and the diagonals in it, uh, diagonals that come... Uh, really everything kind of comes back uh, 
to the uh, to the center where the horse is. The reflection here, I like that. And then this one, I had these horses just barely visible. These little kind of shadow shapes popping out of the um, dust cloud behind this horse. Um, and that's really the main concept of the painting is to have this horse running and then there's this dust cloud behind it and there's these other forms and figures in the cloud behind it. Um, and so then we did one composite to try to see if we could mix a lot of those ideas together. Uh, and this is uh, what we ended up with. Um, the I would say the thing about this is that even though this is clearly the focal point, it takes up so very little space on the canvas. And um, I do like that this one is larger here, um, but you get a completely different sense of this one. And I do like that this gives us more opportunity to play with the world that this thing is in and, the, and this cloud, which it really is, even though this is the brightest point, that's the first thing you see, the painting is kind of about this cloud. Um, and so the original concept, this was this was a painting that I had done uh, a long time ago that um, flopped. It didn't it didn't go well. <laughs> so basically, what it was is you had this kind of desolate wasteland, and then there's a horse running through it, and there and the dust cloud behind it is generating um, uh, these living things. Um, you know, so cities and you know trees and all this is kind of emerging out of the cloud. That was the idea, but um, I didn't give myself enough time, and it was probably above my skill level at the time as well. So, I didn't, I didn't execute well on the idea. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm circling back around to that. And on on one hand, I, I kind of don't want to tell everyone that because um, this could flop again. <laughs> uh, but at, at the same time, you know, obviously this uh, this uh, live stream is. Um, about just kind of painting freely and kind of doing what's uh, interesting and not being stuck to that timetable and to a uh, um, real high level of expectation. Um, and I think I can be totally honest with where I'm headed with things um, and we'll see we'll see whether or not we accomplish that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I think there's a, uh, there's a couple different potential ideas here that could, um, a couple ideas here that could potentially work. Um, one of the things I had mentioned earlier is that you can't necessarily combine everything. Sometimes you make a choice, kind of like what I was saying here, is the, is the subject, um, uh, does the subject take up a large amount of real estate in the image? That would kind of make sense if, if it's about this horse. Um, but if it's about this world and the, um, and the kind of life uh, being generated in this, um, uh, in this cloud here, then having a different composition might make sense. So it appears to me that Photoshop may have just froze on me. So I guess <laughs> I said this was kind of it. We were going to do a color balance. Um, but it looks like this uh, is is truly the the end of it. So this is where we ended up. Uh, like I said, I'll be off uh, next week. There will be no live stream, and then in two weeks we'll be back, and um, we'll see whether this is still on my mind or whether I need to stew on this one a little bit more. Um, but hopefully you got something out of tonight. I know we didn't quite take this as far as we've taken any of the other ones, um, but appreciate you coming along. I appreciate the discussion. And uh, like always, if you had something you were working on, um, and if really if you're if you're watching these to to learn and grow as an artist, uh, at least have a sketch pad with you and be sketching something. Maybe pull up some pictures of horses or lions or something. You know, something interesting on the side and be you know, sketching that as we as we go. Because I think you're going to get the most mileage out of that. I might say something that may inspire you or may um, help you to think about something in a different way, but um, you're going to get the most mileage out of just um, putting things on the paper and applying ideas uh, to your image making. So uh, yeah, definitely encourage that. And, uh, all right, that's it for tonight. Thank you for joining and uh, 
Have a good night.